I must have left it in the car. It's the only place. I hope I didn't leave it where I was. Usa. Thank you. <laughs> good morning. How are you? I am good. And it is a good morning. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning. Yes. You went out to the gym today? No, I worked out at home. Oh, cool. Cool. You look wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. You yeah. too. Look like at your that. hair. Girl. Whew. You know, I washed it. I had washed it yesterday. Yeah. And so, um, I, you know, I don't know. I'm doing this because I'm letting my hair grow out. I'm trying to go natural. I don't know how that's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, I am trying to, I don't know, trying to do some different stuff to see how I can maintain it. Yeah, don't give up because yeah, you just got to train it. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's an experience here it is. with my hair. So um, I am blessing it because, you know, I, I really do love my hair and um when I was in college I used to wear a high top fade oh wow okay yes, girl, I was natural <laughs> before natural was a thing <laughs> and I would it, it it looked like a uh uh so it went up and I would call it my crown and wow I wore it like it was just amazing to me. And, um, and so I know that I can do natural. The one thing that I didn't like about that was the issue that men have is, is having to constantly go to the barber to keep barber. it in shape. Mm -hmm. And then depending upon if you got a regular barber or not, you might come out looking like butch yeah. <laughs> if you don't have the right barber. So, um, so I don't, I don't necessarily know that I want to be dependent on that. Okay. So I don't, I, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to feel this through and see what I'm going to do. Um, but it's going to be gorgeous because it's nice now. Yeah. Yeah. I love your hair. I just, I just oh, don't know what to do with mine. Yeah. Um, Cause I don't know that. I don't know that, that I don't know what'll work for me. I'm no. going to wait and see. <laughs> I'm not going to put anything out there. It just. Be surprised. Yes, 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 yes. So whatever, whatever. It, it's all good. So um, good morning, everybody. <laughs> for hey. those of you who are joining us, I am. Um, I'm excited. Let me, before we get into um, actually acknowledging that we got people out there. First, I, second, I need to pray. Give me, but one second, I got to tell you this. Girl, I failed this morning. During your workout? I, so I went outside and while I was letting the dog out, I decided I would run. And so I did some running, you know, because I got a long driveway. So I did some running, run, 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 run. And this is like 4.45 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so I did this running for maybe about 10 minutes. And then I'm going to go in downstairs to do some leg lifts and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, at the 5 a.m. club, it says do like 20 minutes of brisk workout. So Mm -hmm. I go running down the steps and I get to, I don't know why I thought I was on the bottom step going into the basement, but I, I and I was holding the dog at that and I fail. I, I fell off of the second step down. And so my dog is like this and I'm like this, you know, we both on the, on the floor like looking dazed and confused and um my ankle is sore oh um, wow. but it was like you know and every time I fall it it always jars me and scares the heck out of me because you know you know people's lives have changed like in an instant off of a off of a fall I mm -hmm. mean you know 
So I am very conscious that I need to slow down and pay attention. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, and this journey is meant to be enjoyed and not necessarily this boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So um, yeah, I was, I, but I was thinking about, okay, I need to chime in at five o'clock. So let me get this other part done. And um and that was just it almost turned ugly so oh well i'm glad you're okay other than your ankle and hopefully it's just in shock and not anything else yeah yeah my body is incredibly resilient but and i've got such a good bumper <laughs> thing <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. i trust that my bumpers did what they were supposed to do and cushioned my fall um but at the same time it's like yeah my little doggy don't have any bumpers <laughs> so anyway so i'm gonna slow down slow down slow down so great message that yes, was good. yes 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 girl oh okay so um so father mother god in this moment we give thanks we give thanks for this space for the awarenesses that come up for us, for the ability to stand out, stand in our courage and speak our truth. We know that the light, that the words here are spoken with light, love and wisdom of the highest. We thank you, God, as we feel your presence everywhere, equally present. We bless this morning, we bless this sharing, we bless every eye that sees us, every ear that hears the message. We bless each and every being right here in this space at this time. We give thanks, we release it knowing that it is done, it is so, and so it is. Amen, amen, amen. It is, it's ah! a great day, it yeah. is. You know, and then this morning, you know, the birds are off the chain over here. Um, and this morning while I was writing, I heard a blue jay. Oh, no, man. don't they sound interesting? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but, but before Did you I look it up. Yes. You know, a blue jay. Oh, darn it. This is not the book. I picked up this other book thinking that it was uh, Animal Speaks. So yes, there is um, a blue jay has been one of my animals, one of my birds that I constantly pay attention to because it talks about how a blue jay will take on birds twice its size, um, whether it is a hawk or a crow. Blue jays are fearless. They have this mm. blue crown, this crest upon their head. And, um, and one of the things that it says in there was when a blue jay, when you encounter a blue jay, a blue jay encourages you to stand up in your power and to do whatever is required to deserve the crown on your head. Ooh, that's it's, so good. Yes, it says, don't be a pretender to the throne. Actually earn your place there. Oh. And so when I hear a blue jay, it is like, I pay attention. Like, okay, you're talking to me. And, um, and so it was dark outside, but I could hear it. And I got up to go and look to see if I could see it. Because if one is, is putting up a nest near me, then that too is like, okay, like we in for a summer here, right? Because mm -hmm. um, it is, they are, they are, they That's are really good. good. Yes. And that crown sound like the, the hairstyle you described you had yes. in college. Girl, I have to find a picture <laughs> of that. <laughs> yes, that that's exactly what it looked like. Yeah. Yeah. How good cool is that? Nice. <laughs> yeah. That nice. So funny. You know what? There's a um, there a guy drew a picture of me. Let me see if I can. Uh, because it has been. I haven't taken it off of this bookcase in forever. Uh, I can't get it. Maybe I'll show it to you one of these days. Yeah, because um, 
yeah, he drew a picture of me that um, with that crown on my head. He was an artist that was in one of my philosophy classes. And so, um, yeah, in class, he would sit up and sketch pictures of me. I'll, I'll have to share it. <laughs> I, I, you know, and for some reason, that has been a theme with me. I used to, um, when I first got out of college, I, um, I did substitute teaching. And there was this little kid who used to sit in my class in the third grade class because I replaced somebody that was out on maternity leave. And this little boy would sit there and draw pictures of Miss Bishop all day. <laughs> yeah, he was a precious kid though. His dad would come to the school and have lunch with him. Okay. every day because his mother wouldn't let him see him and so he would he would spend his lunch break with his son um yeah stuff like that just anyway i know i know i know he turned out well because his dad was intentional yeah his mother was intentional like she i don't know whatever issues they had together but he was like, she is not going to keep me from my dude. Right. Mm -hmm. So anyway, anyway, that's, that, that's like back down memory lane. <laughs> hey, Erica, good morning, morning to you. Good morning. There we are. So, um, <laughs> so anyway, so this morning was a blessing for you, I understand. Yes, yes. Um, so um, Rhonda had asked what I was writing about. And um, one of the, because there's two things that I got going on, almost three, but two things that I got going on. One, one of the big ones was just trying to figure out how to take, and actually how I got on the five o'clock club is when I called you about, you know, what do I, how do I take my story and have it as a something of hope or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was sharing with her that I was taking all these journals and trying to create some type of inspirational message. And she said, how many journals do you have? I'm like about, about 30, probably 50, but I'll be modest because some of them aren't full. Um, and she was like, well, there's your book right there. And I was just like, okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it was real encouraging and very inspiring. Um, just because it just feels like, okay, I'm halfway there as opposed to, I feel like sometimes I'm starting over from scratch. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, you know, and, and that's one of the things that I love about Rhonda. She is so encouraging. So, um, so that's our 5 a.m. book club or writing writers group, you guys, that mm -hmm. we are talking about, which is um, something that Rhonda Crowder does on her Instagram page at 5 a.m., and so we get together, we meet up at 5 a.m. from 5 a.m. to 5.15 to just to kind of encourage us. And then we break out, we write from 5.15 to 6.15. We come back in and say, yeah, I did it. You know, give a thumbs up, a boy, and all that stuff. And then we are, we, uh, at 6.30, now Rhonda and some of us will exercise from 6.30 until 7.00. Um, I've modified my morning a little bit by getting up at um, 4.30 so I can work out beforehand and then go into my writing and journaling and my meditation. And Stephanie just gets up. She don't even go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, so it's all of that. You guys, I am, I come in here with, um, so much that I guess I wanted to say about, um, um, you know, the, what's come up for me as far as this. And I hope, uh, I, I know that I don't, I never know who's watching or how many people are watching or whatever, um, it always surprises me when somebody tells me that they watch, because unless you make a comment so, here, I have no yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah, we don't have any idea. 
So, um, so it's all good. I want to say congratulations to Gretchen because Gretchen, I know she watches daily and she is, um, she, she finally has that new position and hopefully okay. it is bigger and better than she ever imagined. And yes. I'm excited for her. Um, and, and just to know that the work that we do here is impactful, even if it does, even if it's only what seems to be a shift in perception, that slight shift in perception can make all the difference in the world. Heck that's, yeah. That's why <laughs> I named my radio show Shift Happens. Yes. A little shift in your thinking. Yes. Open up. Oh my God. It changed. It just is a, it changes an entire trajectory of our journey. Yes. Yes. And so, and, and, and one thing I like to say, and I like to remember myself, remind myself all the time is, is that enlivened people enliven mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. right? So if you are in that space where you are feeling as if you need to rev something up instead of being stuck in a critical standpoint or thinking about, you know, you know, I ain't listening to them or they ain't talking. A, a lot of times when, when you have resistance to stuff, sometimes it's because you're not ready. That's all. Yeah, it, you don't have to judge it. Just mm -hmm. think, oh, I'm not ready. And sometimes we'll say, oh, I'm by, beyond that, right? Because because oh, we okay. do that. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I will say that when we have, sometimes it's our ego that's fighting up against this, right? It is. Yes, it, all, it all wants to keep us safe. The ego yeah. wants to keep us safe. The ego wants us to stay in the safe zone. Like mm -hmm. it's here to protect us to say, no, remember when so-and-so did that? That was not a good idea. You probably mm -hmm. don't want to do that. Or remember what happened the last time? Remember how you felt the last time? You don't want to feel that again. Yeah. And so anything that's foreign or new, and, and if you could just push past that reminder. Um, I have a sticky note that I show to my clients when I'm doing a, I don't know where it is. I must've put it in my notebook. So there's a sticky note that I'll snatch off my monitor and hold up and say, your nervous system is lying to you. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because that's what happens when we don't want to do something new. Mm. It tells us a story from yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, you know, when I, yesterday, I think it was when I shared the, the thing of saying it's not them. Um, there was a lady who had a tattoo on her arm that says it's not them. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, so can you That's imagine? That's a really good reminder. Look at that. She was serious about that shift. Can you imagine that? <laughs> That kind of reminded me of um, a beautiful mind in that thing where the guy would ask other people, do you see anybody talking to me? <laughs> so oh. if you, if you got to like look at your arm to say, it's not them, it's me, <laughs> you know, it's me, it's not them. <laughs> I thought that was so cute. <laughs> profound too that's serious that's serious business right, right i get it and 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 sometimes we do have to remind ourselves that you know because a lot of times what you know yeah we're trying to keep ourselves safe by saying okay i'm not doing that right so yesterday i asked um if you would sit down and just think about situations, things, people, stuff you haven't forgiven, stuff you're mm -hmm. holding on to, right? Because, because that's the kind of stuff that keeps you from, from healing, from living your best life. Mm -hmm. um, and so I asked you to write those things down and, 
as you write them down, I hope you were, even when you resist and when you say, oh, I'm not going to do that, something, something about just you hearing that request caused something to bubble up. And you'll hear the request again. Yeah, yeah. And so now it's like that, that's, is is churning in your system and so you may not want to because it may be painful and sometimes it's not quite as painful as it seemed at the at the at the time it happened because you know to to our child self that little girl stuff that i went through at the time it was really painful but my adult self as i look back on it I could be a little more compassionate with me, mm -hmm. right? A little more generous. Yes. So, um, I, and I'm going to tell you this, Stephanie, I'm going to tell you this, right? I had a dream. Y'all don't judge me. Don't judge me. Don't oh, judge thank me. you so much. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you say, so what? I had a dream one time and it was a really vivid dream. And in this dream, I dreamt that I had killed somebody mm. and then dragged them into this hole and um, left them there to like, I was going to hide it and cover it up. Mm. Mm -hmm. And when I woke up, the dream was so vivid. I was, I was shaken. Um, I remember going around looking in every possible place to see if this was something that could have happened that, um, cause it was just so real, but I was, I mean, I was shaken to the point where when I woke up, I was still upset and I was still crying. You know how you had those dreams? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, um, and it was something that I just, you know, I don't even know if it was my dream. You know what I'm saying? But it was so vivid and so horrendous for me. It shook me. And I was, when, when I think about it, I was traumatized by something wow. that wasn't even mine or wasn't real. It did not happen. Yes. Um, I remember as a child, I was riding in the car with my mother, as we always did, station wagon, you know, whatever, <laughs> sitting at a light over by Shaker Square. And we were, we were behind a car. The light had changed, but this guy had put his car in park and started beating on whoever it was in the passenger seat, wailing on them. Oh my God. And can you imagine us as kids? We were all in the car screaming, oh, 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 help me. You know, we were so, I can't imagine. I can't imagine people who grow up in an environment like that because it was so dramatic and it wasn't even our car. It wasn't anybody we knew. Mm -hmm. We saw somebody getting beat. Mm -hmm. So, so I know that even if it's secondary trauma, if it's not your stuff, I know that this stuff has residual stuff that it leaves behind. It's our biology. Ooh, ooh. So when I say, when I'm asking you to call to mind things that have caused you pain and trauma, um, this is bringing it up, letting it bubble up to the surface so you can see it and release it. Like we got to forgive stuff. Otherwise, love on it. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise it stays stuck in our energy system. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm learning that that's the primary um, hiccup to intuition is holding on to things that um, I, I, I'm vision, I envision intuition like as a pipeline or a stream and that 
when we hold on to things, things that either in the physical that no longer serve us or in the mental body and the emotional body that it's like these little blockages. And so where you could have a wide open, you know, flow, you start to have a shrink, you know, it's shrunken because spirit is always speaking to us. Law is always speaking mm -hmm. to us, but we tighten up the, the uh, we, we tighten up the, uh, the hole, if you will, right. so that only a little bit comes out. And so the impact is so different in my imagination um, is different as mm. opposed to you have it wide open and just flow. Right, right, right. That's the image that we used uh, at one of these days where we talked about the faucet and the water, right? Yeah. God, the water, you're the faucet. And if you keep closing down on the spigot yeah. and letting the trickle come through, then all you'll get is a trickle. Right. And it'll take mm -hmm. forever to fill up your basket of blessings. Mm hmm. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, that's so, good. So forgiveness can be one of those blockages. And that's why it's important to. Right. To check the door. And, yeah. and it's not always stuff that's done to you. Sometimes it's stuff that you witness. Um, sometimes it is. And, and, and sometimes it's not even, um, you know, like a lot of times we think of assaults or physical harm. Sometimes it's betrayal. Mm -hmm. A lot of times betrayal. <laughs> oh my God. Even self-betrayal. That's a whole nother subject, but that. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do we sell ourselves out for too? I mean, you know. Oh my goodness, that's that's heavy. Um, sometimes it, we talked about guilt, we talked about shame. Um, we we talked about um, I just talked about the witnessing uh, because because that's that's one of those things we talk about secondary trauma, and um, an anger and intention have to serve as a um, for us serve as um something that tells us that <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. that something is wrong mm -hmm. and 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 don't forget that we when you feel anger when we get angry you may suppress it on the surface like i may not say anything but that anger can, you know you feel it in in your stomach you Feel it in your jaw, in your head, in your bowels. I mean, anger is, it causes a lot of stuff. So that does not dissipate out of your energy system until you actively and consciously release it. And, and, it, and it affects our organs too, Ooh. like viscerally affects the organs in the body um when when we're angry it squeezes it it um it causes the liver to excrete toxins in the body because it's just all off whack that's why mm -hmm. a lot of people who have anger tremendous anger or negative reactivity suffer from a lot of illnesses that have to do with the those functions like the livers and the kidneys mm -hmm. and the body um because it does such such a damage to our internal organs. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we are in so deep in these in some of these relationships. Sometimes we're born into these relationships. Oh, yeah. and we don't know how to find our way out. And mm -hmm. um, and you know, part of the work you can go to a professional like Stephanie. But the other other part of the work is the stuff that you gotta you gotta do on your own. Yeah. Even if you come to me, you gotta do the work. <laughs> right, right, right. I can't yeah. do it I'm just a guide. Yeah. That's There's no magic wand. <laughs> and and you should see that the pill that you may be trying to take is only masking symptoms that are Absolutely. are not gonna go away. So do the work, right? Do the work. Um yeah, so so I think all of that is 
um, is so important. And it, it's not called body language for nothing. The body mm. does have a language, right? Yes. And it's speaking to you all the time. So um, forgiveness is this willingness to withdraw the, the poison that that is in your system to withdraw your soul from a narrative that may no longer serve it um, is is disconnecting from something and that disconnection is necessary especially if you've got a disease setting up in your system how do you know you got a disease setting up in your system um According to Carolyn Miss, she says that you start to feel exhausted. Yeah, low um, energy. I yeah, hear. you're right. Mm -hmm. um, you, it, it doesn't always begin with pain. Sometimes it become, begins with low energy. Sometimes it begins with depression. Sometimes it, um, you know, you, people will tell you that your light is out, right? You, you no longer see that glow about people. I mean, and you're so ruminating. Things. You're always oh, ruminating. Yeah. So much rumination goes yeah. on. Sending energy to stuff that is not even there. Um, I, you know, I was talking to this woman one time, you know, I, cause I get a thing. I like to talk to strangers. And so I was down, uh, downtown and I started talking to this lady and she was, you know, she's talking and she's talking about her, her parents. And, you know, I said, oh, I lost my parents too. And so she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And, you know, you could, you could feel the heaviness in her energy, right? I don't know about you, but I can feel when people are heavy, it's, it's like a, a heaviness to them. And so she started, she's going on and on and she's talking about her parents. And I finally asked, well, how long ago did they die? And she was like, well, 12 years ago. I mean, she knew like to the date, 12 years ago. And I'm thinking like, are oh, okay, but. It's true. It happens. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tarry there. I mean. <laughs> there, there's some form of um, that's where I come into play because I uh -huh. want to re I want to re uh, investigate what the, if there's a loyalty that has been established in that family of origin and they've learned that they have to remain loyal mm. and so or they feel disloyal some message that they someone received that message and so it, it's almost like giving a person permission to allow that to have that experience move on because they don't have permission to just like not experience it like it was yesterday. Like it's oh, not okay. And right. but people are holding firm to their loyalties. You, you know what? I, I will say, so I, you know, I love my parents. I love my parents. But one of the things that I learned from, I don't know who it was, it's probably one of those, um, the angel people. And I think I'd gotten rid of all of the books that I had by the people who talk about that they talk to angels, because what I know is, is that that wasn't my lane, right? Mm -hmm. But in the book, I read this, I, so first off in one of my meditations, um, I was meditating and um, uh, the question came up in my meditation, um, if I could talk to anybody out of history or whatever, who would it be? And I, you know, I said, wow, I wish I could talk to my mother again. And spirit kind of came back to me at like, huh, you know, uh, your mother, um, has moved on mm. like she did her job and she has moved on why are you still dwelling in that energy and i'm thinking oh is it like that i mean my mother won't always be my mother mm. and sometimes we make stuff so personal you know when it's when it's really not personal it is like every mother that is what, you know, it's every mother that is a mother, 
right? It's, it's not just that, that she birthed me. It was that there was a job that was required and she stepped up and she did her portion and she got her lessons. I got my lessons. And then there is this, you know, okay, now onward move. Mm -hmm. So that was the one message, but then also on in from one of the angel guides, they talked about this, um, this thing of, and I know y'all, sometimes this sounds hokey. It, it sounds hokey, but if it doesn't fit, don't put it on, right? If, <laughs> if, if the shoe don't fit you. Don't wear it. You don't yes, wear it. don't, right? But in, in this particular thing, it said that every time we are like putting energy into something that is past and gone, we're investing part of ourselves into that that has no so so it is almost like we are we're spending without the ability to recoup anything from what we've spent okay and so you're giving energy or attention to past and that past has a cost when you are giving your attention and your energy to it it's not as if you can resurrect something right if the energy is I am missing something or something was taken away from me or I lack something. So when that request comes with, and that's how you can determine where the request is coming from, what theme, if I can use that word, is coming from by the response that you get back. I, I would imagine that if I could talk to anybody, it would be my mother came from a place as if I was missing. Yeah. Her, like you were missing something. And it's like, you're not missing every, anything. You got it. And she gave you all that was supposed to be given to you in the, you know, so being mindful that a lot of times I didn't know this either. And I'm always trying to be aware of it. I have to, because I am horrible at this. Um, the theme behind my desire, if it's coming from a place that something is missing, the reality is, is that nothing's missing. Nothing's right. broken. Nothing's right. missing. Right, nothing's right. broken, nothing's missing. Everything that we are supposed to have, we have. Everything we're supposed to know, we know. Wow, what would it be like for me to sit in that? That's right. my that's my theme all day long. What would it mean if I could just be all right with this right now? Like this is a sacred yes right here. <laughs> so that's my yeah. mental exercise on a daily basis. You know, um, Eric Fromm in his book, uh, one of his books, um, he is a, a philosopher, F-R-O-M-M. -M. It, was, it was really shocking. One of the things that he said was, is that when we, when we are born, you know, everything is about growth. Everything is about mm -hmm. a forward progression. Mm -hmm. He was like, he says, um, you hang on to your mother's skirt and you, you know, or her pants, whatever it is your mama might be wearing, and you pull <laughs> yourself up. You learn how to walk oh, at, wow, by touching their, your hand. He says, it is not for you to stay in that position. He's like, it is always about the progression. He says, but what he says, what people do somehow they get the message that it's okay to go back and try to find that umbilical cord and try to breathe and eat through it. Mm -hmm. That's not even close to okay. And that's not what love is, mm -hmm. right? It's not you basically trying to get what is already, you have already been weaned from. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that that in and of itself is, is not fair to a mother and it's not fair to yourself. You got two big old spiritual feet that you can stand on. And so you have to stand on them. Stop saying what your parents didn't give you. Stop worrying about what deal with it. Because if no. you are not dealing with it from a place of strength and a place of power, it's not somebody else that's weakening you. It's you that's weakening you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's the work that that's the work that has to be done too, is us being mindful of the fact that we are staying in a place of yesterday. 
And it happens. Mm-hmm. I mean, we watch the news that gives us yesterday's news. I mean, we are a society that is built on yesterday. Um, we hold people accountable for yesterday. You know, nobody gets a new start, new a start to a new day. Like, nope, you're a liar forever and the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> You know, and that's one of the things that gets me. Oh, when they were in college, they smoked marijuana. So what? Exactly. What do you think? Did this last forever? <laughs> you know, yeah. just just yeah. so 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 learn doing the forgiveness work. I'm just saying that to say that it is, yes, it is huge. Um and we are living in a time during this pandemic where we have to really realize that this is not just something that happened to us, right? Like uh, like somebody put this out there and we get to blame these people and blame that person. This is not something that is just happening to, to us. It is something right. that we have by our consciousness somehow participated in calling for the calamity that we are perceiving if you perceive it as a calamity, right? Um, Sometimes I think that it has been fabulous for me because it has has allowed me space and time. And And um, the earth has cried out for it. Yeah. Especially in the beginning. I mean, the earth has cried out for it. And if the scriptures are true, the scripture said that that would be a reality. The yeah. earth would cry out and it got an opportunity. We heard so many stories. They didn't last long coming up. I know it's still happening about how, you know, fish and the waters and things. And when we were all shut in, how things in nature just began to multiply itself and to become more nutrient, right. nutritional and things like that. So yeah. And the smog cleared up in California. Huh? Up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So it's definitely a collective consciousness. Yeah. Um, and so, but if we get the intention behind it to be for love and not out of angst and irritation, ha, yeah. we could have something else other than a COVID, but we could have the same experience and it doesn't have right. to be COVID. Right, right. So, so yeah, so we, there is a healing that is taking place that has to take place um, through this whole shift, this whole global shift. So, um, and, and, you know, and, and I love that in that, that we are, a lot of times what we do is, is, is our feelings are based on something that's already passed. That emotional stuff is based on something that's already passed. And then um, my hair is in my ear. <laughs> and then um, what, what the interesting thing too is, is that is based on something that is past. And a lot of times what we do is, is we go around and, you know, we'll, when somebody will say, oh, that's terrible. Oh yeah, it was terrible. And then we start to, um, what's the word? Um, embellish. I was going to say massage word. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Knead it like dough and yeast. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And it just, yeah, and it keeps growing, doesn't it? And so, so we have got to, one of the things that, that um, we're taught is, is that we have to turn totally away from the experience. I'm not saying don't feel your feelings, right? Because I think that it is important. There's some important lessons to learn from that, but do not dwell on it, Right. Don't dwell on it. The, 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 that's the message of the crucifixion. And I think that was from our Lent experience. Don't dwell on those things. Um, okay. So let me see. I want to, I want to read, um, I want to read something for you guys. And I don't want to read a lot. Oh, it's already after eight o'clock. Um but I don't want to read a lot, but I want to read something for you. Um, What? They, you know, they've given some good examples in here of people who have had healing experiences in their life. Yeah. And, um, and also people who have not had good healing experiences. 
a lot of times, you know, you will have something that is, um, let me, let me read this. And so uh, that's too much to read. I'm trying to really surmise it. So a, a doctor called Carolyn Miss up with a patient and he said that this patient who um, was identified by his profession was, that was a dentist. And this mm -hmm. dentist was having some, some problems, and, but nothing was really showing up. You know how you go to the doctor and they don't see um, the dis-ease or the thing that you know that you've got brewing in your body. They don't see it yet because the test results are not showing. So say for instance, your PSA level has not climbed yet, but you know that there's something wrong or you are, you think that diabetes is developing, but it's not yet. And so when, when you have an inkling that there is something going on, it seems like it's the time to address it, but the test will not show or confirm what you know. And so what you do is you go home and you forget about it, right? You get a negative diagnosis. And so you go home and you forget about it. But this guy was having pains on his right side. And it says that um, it was around the pancreas area and it was generating, his pancreas was generating, this is what she got from her reading that something was generating a problem um, and some toxic energy. So what she told him was, is that the man was, a, was burdened by an enormous feeling of responsibility and it had become a constant source of anguish for him. So that just like Stephanie had said, when you're constantly focused in on something, a negativity or something, you're giving all your energy to it. And that's exactly what it is. He felt intensely that he was unable to live as he wanted to. And he dwelled mm -hmm. on that feeling almost to the exclusion of any other emotion. So if you are dwelling on, on something, whether it is where you missed out or um, that or you, you- And you feel trapped like a, mm. uh, you feel like trapped. There's a tarot card, uh, I don't know which one it is, but there's a, that has this person that's trapped, but they actually have the ability to set themselves free. Right. But they're standing in this space of being trapped. And so their narrative, their glasses and how they're seeing life is through this place of, I, this is all I can do. And this is what is expected of me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. And, and, and how often, how often do we do that? It's amazing because, um, sometimes, sometimes I'm not, I'm not, this, this is nothing against anybody, but sometimes people feel trapped in the choices that they've made. So mothers yeah. who, who get overwhelmed and bogged down in their role of mothering, um, we want to make it, we, it is a sacred thing, um, a sacred responsibility, but at the same time, People do stuff not because they want to be in that situation. Um, when, when I was telling y'all about my feelings about chocolate, I was just as intense, if not more so, about not wanting to mother any children. I, I had no desire. And I was clear about that from the time I was a kid because, um, you know, my mother, not only did she have her five, she also babysat. And so she always had kids around and it would be like she looked like a jungle gym with kids hanging off of her all the time and I was like I don't want that I don't want that no 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 that was not gonna be me so but then everybody else you know and 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 as a matter of fact people act like they can take your choice away from you Ooh. that's why I knew I wasn't getting married because you were not gonna make my decisions for me Oh, and that, at the time, that was what it felt like. It yeah. felt like a choice between me or some stranger, because I didn't, I wouldn't even know who she was, right? Mm -hmm. 
So I made my decisions for me. And a lot of people don't feel empowered to make those decisions because society right. says, society says you got to be married. Society says you got to be a mother. Society said, it's like and that. this is how you do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like that. They give you um, the American dream. Whose dream? <laughs> Who's America? That's a nightmare <laughs> some, for some people. I'm sorry, but... <laughs> Just so you know. So what happened to our little fella that followed the rules? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for pulling me back. <laughs> um, so, so she goes on to say to create disease, negativity has to become a d- dominant emotion as it did with this dentist. Um, so she goes on and she talks about, you know, how this was his work. And then she says, um, when he was, when this, I, when the, the thing was communicated to him and said, you know, maybe you ought to think about making some changes in his life. It says, unfortunately, the man was unable to it act on the advice he was given. He defined responsibility as an obligation to care for others to the exclusion of himself and was Mm -hmm. unable to reconceptualize reconceptualize a life that included self-care and self-fulfillment as well. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times that's what happens, right? we feel unable to make the changes necessary for our healing to choose ourselves, right? Because put our own oxygen mask on. Right, right, right. To put our own oxygen mask on because somebody has labeled that selfish. Yes. And oh, you know, you nobody wants to be selfish. Yes. Why? I mean... <laughs> At a certain point, my mother used to tell me all the time, it's a sorry dog that don't wag his own tail. You got to (laughs) take care of you. Um, Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying I like that statement. (laughs) Yeah. So while Dennis, while the dentist could not accept that his professional sadness and feelings of entrapment were were changing his body chemistry and health, it is easier for others to recognize these patterns in him. Accepting the idea that every part of your life from your physical history to your relationships to every attitude, opinion, and belief you carry inside of you affects your biological mm. makeup is the only part of the of, is only part of the healing process. However, you also have to get that acceptance to move from the mental level into the physical level into Mm. your body to feel the truth viscerally and cellularly and to believe it wholly so gotta do work (laughs) you gotta do the work hey good morning tony um so I will say that, um, you know how I was talking about yesterday about Vipassana and how you do the body scans during your meditation. And so um, I don't know if people ever try this and maybe you do, maybe you don't, but to be able to feel like, I think up here, now if I drop my, and and the ego will get in the way because there will be resistance to this, right? You drop your attention down into your throat and your throat has a a consciousness. It's almost like going to a different department, right? Mm -hmm. If you were to think about it like you would on a job, um, you got the accounting department, the HR department, you got the the custodial department, you got all the... So it's like going from the head to... Mm -hmm this part here which is your vocal part right is is what you and and so this part is saying you know what i don't need you up here Mm. you know go go somewhere i got this right (laughs) and then when you drop down into the heart area the heart is saying oh girl hey you know (laughs) 
the the heart is 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 the heart of it all is saying um yeah don't pay any attention to that they just think that you're trying to make it seem like you're not we not they we're not on the job but you know what going down because your solar plexus do need your attention so you go down to the solar plexus and then you drop your attention into that area and and see how things are going on i'm just coming to check in right and this is all this mental head starting to really live through the body right mm -hmm. so you yeah, go down into the solar plex and then and then as you go down and you keep going lower, you are asking, hey, what am I not seeing? What am I not paying attention to? What are you struggling with, right? Mm -hmm. And and your, your intestines might say, you know what? You're not paying attention to the fact that we don't like ice cream. Mm -hmm. It makes us have to work <laughs> harder down here. So get your head together and recognize that we got needs too. Because... <laughs> Cause, Cause they working hard, but then when you eat that dog on ice cream, now you causing us to do extra work. So, so it may be sending a message back up to my brain saying, "Get your mess together, right?" Cause, cause ice cream is summer. You think, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is what right. I do in the summer. This is what I do. Yeah, but it's saying no. You got to pay attention. You, yeah. we making all this noise down here because you not listening. Mm -hmm. And the solar plex reminds you is for unity and relationships and connection. Oh, so those yes. people are there to help you. They're your blind spots if you allow that to yes. take place. That's what the community is good for, is to be a blind spot for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Minds us again or affirms us and gives us the attaboys or it says, yeah. cut, cut that out. That is not cute on you. Right. <laughs> and so and so we also have to have the have the courage to also drop down into our sexual organs, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because they also have something to tell us. And a lot of times we try to make it seem like that part of our body does not exist, yes. right? <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, we also have to make peace down there. And if it's not responding, say, oh. I'm sorry, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Right? What does I require of me? Yes. <laughs> yes. I, you know, it's so true. I gotta check in every <laughs> once in a while with my body. And so, so try. I, I know I give I give folks, I, I give all this. It seems like homework. So we got the forgiveness stuff and the forgiveness stuff should have you making notes and, and really looking at what is it that I need to forgive and release, um, you know, and as you're doing that, I, I mean, we, we could talk about doing mirror work so and all let that. Me, yeah, I was going to tell you some stuff came up for me when you were okay. talking, we were talking about forgiveness. Uh -huh. and, and so um, for the forgiveness dance. For anybody, I don't know who this is for, but there's somebody that dances or has stopped dancing. You know, I think in 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 the forgiveness work, it is really good for us to use like so much creativity, whether it's mirror work, whether it's moving your body and dancing, um, drawing. What would forgiveness look like on paper for you? Um, some other things that we do. Uh, drawing your face and then drawing your face in unforgiveness and then turn it around or get another sheet of paper and draw your face in forgiveness. And you can draw your face with words and you can draw your face as your face. But forgiveness does require us to use our sacral chakra area because it push, it's like a- What's the sacral chakra? chakra? That the, 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 the area, it's the orange area, the one right above the root chakra. It's the one that gives creativity and 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 uh, allowing the connectedness of the root chakra, and the root chakra is creation and and um, birthing, and mm -hmm. so getting rid of the unforgiveness and moving it, being creative with that, is is such a great healing exercise. So you wrote your list the other day. Now put some motion to it. That I mean, other than saying forgiveness then there's other creative creative opportunities for you to use and forgiveness that that solidifies it uh-huh oh, can't so, see that 
Yeah, that, I, so that's the chakra system. So I know it's probably hard for everybody to see, but um, that's kind of pretty clear. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's kind of what it looks like. And if you got the anatomy of the spirit, then you will have it inside of your book. Um, and 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 so yeah, so doing the exercise. Another, um, remember, I was saying that you can even if somebody is dead and gone to begin to speak your word. You yeah. know, um, the Christ in me, or you could say, I forgive and release you for whatever it is that you have done whether it has made me feel small or judged me or um, even the, the physical violations, you know, you can do that work and speak your word for them too. I know that you forgive me for mm -hmm. something I've done. And so back and forth, um, people have done exercises where they change the chairs, right? Yes. That's good yeah. Stuff. And, and that's, that's like, what is that? You, you sit in one chair and talk to another chair. Yes. Like the person back and sitting forth. in the chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you go back and forth. You be the person and you be you. Oh, it's so powerful. It's called the yeah. gestalt method. And it's a very powerful method because then you get to say to you what you needed to hear. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you kind of like are channeling the other part of that person I'm going to be so I'm going to step out on water and say you'll be channeling the resistant part of the person who may have offended you because mm -hmm. you get to now share in a space that experience with that person from the side that they weren't able to show you mm -hmm. yeah that's so, really good that's so yeah good. that I I, I I used to like to see um the transformation that people would have through that i mean and there are so many people and so many different ways of doing this healing work you know mm -hmm. so so we present some that uh stephanie is is actually a, a licensed therapist um i'm just you know i'm a minister ah. i'm not just a minister i'm a yeah minister. what <laughs> Look, with a superman on my chest who is is interested in all things, right? Yes. All things healing and loving and spiritual and all that good stuff. So, um, and so we we give you information that we have access to. But now don't get me wrong, because I know that people who travel overseas going to other countries to sit at the feet of gurus yes. who probably will tell you the same thing I'm telling you right here and right now. And if you don't do the work here, you ain't gonna do the work there. Mm -hmm. But but you know, there are people who are uh, in Iceland who, you know, they do this thing where they get in those um blue oh, waters, the blue yes. strings. And they do rebirthing exercises and breathing exercises and um, and 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 talk about different ways of uh, different healing modalities that get you to the same end, right? Um, the, but healing is a choice that you make, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So let me finish up with this guy, and then we're gonna get off of here. Um, so uh, did I say that already that he couldn't give up that already? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, and so then it, she goes on to say, um, it sometimes takes a, a concerted effort to shift your mind to allow yourself to heal. While the dentist could not accept his professional sadness and feelings of entrapment were changing his body chemistry and health, it was easier for others to recognize this pattern in him. I just realized I read that already. Accepting the idea that every part of your life from your physical, I did that already, right? You kind of paraphrased that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to jump down here then. It is very easy to learn something new and apply that knowledge. It is very easy to learn something new and apply that knowledge only casually. The idea that biography becomes biology implies that we participate to some degree in the creation of illness. But, and this is a crucial point, we must not abuse this truth by blaming ourselves or yes. any patients for becoming ill. Mm -hmm. people rarely choose consciously to create illness that's right rather 
illnesses develop as a consequence of behavioral patterns and attitudes that we do not realize are biologically toxic until they have already become so. Yeah, oh, so true. Yeah. So um, I'm skipping again. To create disease, negative emotions have to be dominant. And what accelerates the process is knowing the negative thought to be toxic, but giving it permission to thrive in your consciousness anyway. Unchecked. Yeah. Sometimes, and, and I'm guilty of this. Yes, yes, Tony. Um, biology, be, biography becomes our biology. And so, and, and Tony makes a good point here. Tony says, um, that weight gain is one of those things. And yes. it is yes. absolutely, it absolutely is a barrier, um, a thing that we put on in order. Sometimes it's because we think it'll protect us or keep yes. people out or yes. distant or whatever. But yes, weight gain is absolute um, associated with harboring of negative stuff, negative energy and unwillingness to heal and unwillingness to, to confront those issues. So yes, thank you for saying that because um, sometimes we don't see that. We don't mm -hmm. see it. We, you know, you are not a victim of your life, right? You are not a victim of, of the way. And, and let me say this too, because, you know, and this is, this is a little shift because um, it just, it just dawned on me since I've been doing that 5 a.m. club routine where I exercise first, like you were talking about, Stephanie, mm -hmm. where I exercise first, what I noticed is, is immediately when I go to eat, it's almost like my, the portions that I'm able to eat have decreased drastically. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what is that? Like, like I, I found myself taking a couple of bites and thinking, oh, I'm full. Hmm. Where did that come from? <laughs> and is that just because I get up and in, in the first thing in the morning and get my body moving? Does that set in motion yeah. my metabolism before wow. I even take my first bite? Oh, it has been amazing for me. So I, I, I encourage people to read that 5 a.m. club, and I know that it seems hokey, but here's the thing. I always say, try something before you dismiss it. Yeah. You know, sometimes we just summarily, I ain't doing that. We summarily <laughs> dismiss stuff because it's not our normal. Mm -hmm. I tell you. I, yeah, <laughs> I am not going to be stuck in the temple of my familiar forever. Right, I love that. <laughs> uh, I am not going to do that. So, um, so, and and then she says, um, um, she says, for instance, you may know you need to forgive someone, yet you decide that remaining angry gives you more power. <laughs> Remaining obsessively angry makes you more likely to develop a dis-ease because the energy consequences of a negative obsession is powerlessness. Energy is power and transmitting energy into the past by dwelling on painful events drains power from your present day body and can lead to illness. Mm -hmm. So you guys, this is, this is the work at hand this is the stuff that um that you get to do yay and yes. we are so glad that we are able to be here and to share this with you you guys um you if if you want to share your testimony and your journey we are always open and available to um to hear to receive to you know your privacy is 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 important um but you know if you need to find something. But but the wonderful thing about this is just setting the energy in motion actually yes. draws people and opportunities to you. And um, pay attention. Just yeah. be aware like now. Be aware. Yeah. 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 So um so I appreciate you guys being here. Anything else, Stephanie? No, this was yummy. Uh, yes. 
good, real good. Real, real good. good. I, yeah, no, this was so good. Yeah. Yes. This so was I, just like church. Yeah, I get to be back here at one I know, right? Church, so um, <laughs> I am going to close this here because I don't want to just come back on here at one o'clock and talk about the same thing I've been talking about <laughs> Monday <laughs> through today, right? So I need to really get into a space and um, and work on what I'm uh, talking about. I send you about. energy of new and refreshing awareness of new stuff. There's a message Thank for you. somebody else at one Thank o'clock you. and that you will Thank have you. it. You will yeah. have it. You know, I, this, is, this is such a, a wonderful, wonderful so this is one of the things that COVID has provided um, us the space in order to do this, right? And yeah. technology, and um, and so this this work is needed work, right? Mm-hmm. It's is so needed. So um, if you share this, or if you just do the work yourself, and what happens is is when you start to see a change in you, people will be saying. Like I did that woman when that that was doing um doing her Sony uh her Yoni Yoni steamer thing, girl, what you doing? Because that's exactly how I what you doing? Whatever that is, I need some of that. And 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 when and 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 it took me a minute, just like with Rhonda and that five a.m. group, it took me literally. I don't know, eight months or something to actually say, okay, I, I know I need to change. So let's see if this works. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and so it took me, it may have taken me a year to get my own sauna. It may have taken me, you know, nine months to start waking up at 5 a.m. It takes, it takes as long as it takes, but that's, that's it. Just get there. Just get, get there. there. Right, that's the song. You can reach me by railway. Stephanie makes me want to sing, and I can't sing. She can sing, and she don't. But I no. sit there, and I can't sing, and I do. <laughs> so maybe your narrative needs to change. Wait, wait a minute. Right. So, so here's what I used to tell me. People used to say, "Can you sing?" And I was like, "Everybody can sing." And they was that's like, "No, right. no, they can't." I said, "Yes, they can." I said, "They don't all sound good." But we can sing. If you can and talk, that, you can yeah, sing. Yeah, that's relative. <laughs> Stephanie <laughs> actually can sing. She sounds good when she sings. Um, <laughs> Thank you for saying that. But she, but she don't. Uh, <laughs> we got to, we got to start coaxing that out of her. Like, <laughs> like that's a song. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that song, "Get Here." Yeah, uh-huh. I love that song. Yeah, yeah. That, that carried me um i don't remember who's saying that but um, is it rochelle not rochelle for real no it was before that um was not the carpenters no no i'm thinking when um diane reeves sung it too didn't she no no it wasn't diane reeves it wasn't rochelle it. for real she may have sang it, but that's not the, I've heard that song in the seventies. Oh, I don't remember hearing that in the seventies. Yeah. My parents' radio. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. No, I don't remember from then. I remember it from somebody more current. Or I shouldn't say more current. I think it was in the, yeah, because I remember it um, when I was in the 90s, because that was the song that I took with me when I was um, when I was in. Get here, in, here when you can. Yeah. Let me see. You can reach me by trailway. You can reach me in a air blow. You can. You can reach me with your mind. You can reach me. By oh no, yeah. it's um, it is it's uh, who is this? Olita Adams. Olita Adams, that's her. Yeah. I don't it's, care a, it's, a, it's a it's a uh, it's a but, recent it's a 2010, I think. Let me see. Here if you can. Maybe the sound, the melody sounds older, but yeah, that yeah, I know this song too. Mm. But yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, he's at Olita Jones. <laughs> it was an oh. Olita. Huh? <laughs> All right, y'all. Olita Adams song. 
Okay. Well, sing it for us sometime. All okay. right, John. <laughs> we happy we Sunday. are off of here. <laughs> yes, happy, happy, amazing <laughs> Sunday. We'll be here tomorrow too. Yes. At same time. And yes. uh yeah, so be blessed. I'll be back yes. at one o'clock though, right here on Man. my page. So yeah. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye. I forgot to do my prayer of protection. Um, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God enfolds us. No, the power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us wherever you are, God is, and all is well. See ya. <laughs> Messed that up. <laughs>